Real Analysis and Information Center presents Only He, a film by Mir Shahin. Armenia is an occupying country. This occupation must end, and it will end. We are on the right path. Our case is the right case. We will win. Karabakh belongs to us. Karabakh is Azerbaijan. I will speak about the victory, that is, about the Supreme Commander-in-Chief at a time when everyone was talking about the 44-day war. Once upon a time, there was a country called Azerbaijan. However, it didn't have one-fifth of its territory. Azerbaijan just waited with its land, air, people. Waited every day, every hour. Every ordinary Azerbaijani, every soldier, every officer, every ordinary citizen and student, every peasant and worker, every intellectual, like a mother waiting for her child. From the baby who rang the first bell to the teenager who rang the last bell, they felt it. It was felt in a pulse of a newborn up to the pulse of an old man who passed away. For almost 30 years, the people of Azerbaijan have been waiting for the day when they will stand proud. However, they were already getting used to being defeated. They were about to accept the standard of despair. Prayers, wishes and dreams in the name of Garabakh were about to be answered. The worst thing was that the people started to not believe in their dreams. At a time when everyone was beginning to lose heart, cursing and despising the absolute injustice of the world, there was a kind of notoriety. Everyone was trying to accept their defeat materially and spiritually, and the people were adapting their culture, art, social life, and their general way of life to the conditions of this defeat. Writers, poets, directors and sculptors wrote works, made films, staged performances, erected monuments dedicated to the defeat of Garabakh, and they received awards. Newlyweds were reluctant to have patriotic photo sessions in the Alley of Martyrs, or they didn't go at all. No, Garabakh was not forgotten but it was thought of as a close relative who had long since passed away. The thought of reconciliation was fading more and more. No, of course, no one reconciled with the enemy and didn't intend to, but now everyone was about to come to terms with himself. Only he did not concede. Only he did not think about defeat. Only he believed that it was possible to get out of even the most difficult situation it was also possible to win. If Armenia continues military provocation, our country will protect its citizens in accordance with the UN Charter and, if necessary, punish the aggressor again as in April 2016. Only he was sure that the people would have a moment to gain power. It was simply necessary to reform his nation, to cleanse the cursed traces of defeat and rotten atmosphere. Only he believed, only Ilham Aliyev. He acted as a trigger to turn the 30-year-old defeat into a victory, to ensure the territorial integrity of the national pride and national dignity. It was as if he had turned himself into a weapon and ammunition. It was his struggle. It was the main purpose of his life and destiny. The liberation of Garabakh and other occupied territories was his lifelong constitution and his father's will. Now everyone is talking about the victory of the 44-day war. But did that victory really come in just 44 days? No, of course not. The road to victory began on June 15, 1993, from the return of the great Haydar Aliyev, from the returning point of history called Aliyev. President Ilham Aliyev has been leading the victory for 17 years. 17 years! 
There was only one way to win this victory, the Heder Aliyev way. Ilham Aliyev was going that way. He led the people that way. While exercising the authority of the President of the Republic of Azerbaijan, I swear that I will abide by the Constitution of the Republic of Azerbaijan, protect the independence and territorial integrity of the state, and serve the people with dignity. When Ilham Aliyev had been elected president, Azerbaijan had only been separated from the Soviet Union for 12 years. Admittedly, Azerbaijan was not as successful as other republics in the same category. The legacy left to Azerbaijan, both material, geographically and militarily, was more unfavorable, more dangerous, and of lower quality than its allies. Incompetent people ruled the country. The whole republic. No, we can't say that. The republic was not whole. The republic was in political turmoil. Azerbaijan has experienced two great returns in its recent history. One was announced by President Ilham Aliyev. This is the return of former refugees to liberated territories after the settlement of the Karabakh conflict. The other is the great return which happened in 1993. The great Haydar Aliyev returned to the leadership of Azerbaijan and began to reunite the disintegrated state. It was the great return that was able to stabilize the Republic, which had been destroyed by various socio-political processes and mass movements. Our late writer, Yusuf Samadoglu, sarcastically called Azerbaijan, which has been overthrown once a year since 1988 and turned into a country, the Eggplant Republic. He said, we don't grow bananas, we grow eggplants. It took Haydar Aliyev exactly 10 years to form and organize, make and present Azerbaijan as a basic state. It was Haydar Aliyev who formed the state from different streets, in a true sense of the word. He called people back from the streets, in a figurative sense. Only Haydar Aliyev could express the meaning of being in an independent state and a free people so accurately. We are free. We are independent. We are absolutely free. We are not dependent on anybody. We are the rulers of our destiny. You know, it's worth suffering for months, for years. It's worth staying hungry only for this. History is first and foremost a subject about not forgetting. Therefore, history must be accepted as it is. It must be reconciled that this was the Azerbaijan accepted by Hedar Aliyev, a state that was destroyed, separated, poor, declared unreliable, inconstant by people who believed in a leader every year, or rather deceit. 
the country with leaking roofs and with cardboard on windows. Azerbaijan disintegrated by a weak, reluctant group, a group of people, street people, random people, who had to be united. People had to be gathered and encouraged. Heydar Aliyev was doing it. He was being shot at. They shot his closest comrades in arms, like Shamsi Rahimov. Afiyadin Jalilov. They put a detonator in his path and tried to assassinate him. They tried to shoot his plane down. They were trying to overthrow the government. In fact, to prevent Heydar Aliyev was to prevent the implementation of the concept of state independence, the liberation of Karabakh, which was the main task, and therefore to prevent Victory Day, which everyone today celebrates together, together with friends and enemies. During the great return of Heydar Aliyev as a leader, a guide, a moral and political leader, he did everything and left, setting an action plan for the future. And in his last breath, he closed his eyes and bequeathed the future of the Azerbaijani state, the solution of fateful issues to his son Ilham. I visited the grave of the great leader, Hidar Aliyev. I bowed to him and paid tribute to him. I said in my heart that I'm a happy man because I could fulfill my father's will. The soul of the great leader is happy. Now everyone is talking about the victory in the 44-day war, but in fact Ilham Aliyev's Karabakh conflict started 17 years ago. We must never forget the pressure on Ilham Aliyev, both in the country and abroad. They tried to prevent the November 2020 victory for the first time in 2003 in the center of Baku. Look at the irony of fate, opposition captives longing for slavery and controlled by foreign forces gathered in the square called Azad Luk, liberty, the forces driven by various foreign states and their special services attacked law enforcement officers with trenchants and drove cars at them. They made a lot of tricks to overshadow the victory of the main candidate, Ilham Aliyev who won with great advantage over his opponents. Analyzing all the events from November 8, 2020, all the meanness, physical and moral humiliations are clear. Ilham Aliyev knelt where Heydar Aliyev did and put his head where Heydar Aliyev did. Now everyone is talking about the victory in 44 days. The warriors talk about how they fought and the commanders talk about how they took them to battle. Everyone has their own truth. But I want to talk about his victory, Ilham Aliyev's victory. Because the copyright of our history, the victory of our history, belongs to him as the supreme commander-in-chief. Because he was fighting not only with Armenia, but all the world powers with unjust international rules. He is the cause of victory, the first warrior and the main force that led the army and people to victory. The warriors believed in him and they chose the highest, the sacred road, to martyrdom. Rejoicing, laughing, they set out for eternity. <laughs> War is not just a fight by firing guns, by using ammunition. It's not just a fight between soldiers. In a war, all the forces and directions of the warring parties are confronted. If you are just scraping by, you can't fight an enemy. Undoubtedly, economic independence was the first place in Ilham Aliyev's victory. Azerbaijan had to be stronger than the enemy in order to be able to snatch its own from the hands of the invader. And Aliyev made the Azerbaijani economy prosperous and reliable.
purposeful development of the national economy, first of all, in accordance with the independent security interests of the state, development of all directions in an interconnected manner, the ability to make decisions independently of any state at a crucial moment. Aliyev's course of economic victory was based primarily on these conditions. Aliyev knew very well the situation in Armenia. His mention of this information comparing Azerbaijan's capabilities and strength was also a warning to the enemy. Azerbaijan is ranked 52nd in Armenia 96th in ranking the world's strongest armies. In particular, Azerbaijan ranks 63rd in Armenia 86th in terms of air force. Azerbaijan ranks 67th in terms of naval power. Armenia has no navy. Azerbaijan ranks 32nd in Armenia, 78th in terms of tank power. The source is the Global Firepower 2019 report. I am now focusing on key macroeconomic indicators. Thus, in 2019, the gross domestic product of Azerbaijan was $47.6 billion in dollar terms, while in Armenia, it was only $13 billion. In terms of purchasing power, Azerbaijan has a GDP of $187 billion, Armenia $33 billion, the difference is 5.6 times. The GDP per capita is 4,800 in Azerbaijan and $4,500 in Armenia. The GDP per capita in terms of purchasing power is $18,600 in Azerbaijan and $11,000 in Armenia. Foreign exchange reserves are $51 billion in Azerbaijan and $2 billion in Armenia. The difference is 25 times. The foreign trade turnover is $33.6 billion in Azerbaijan and $7.4 billion in Armenia. The difference is four and a half times. Export in Azerbaijan is $19.6 billion, in Armenia $2.4 billion. The difference is 8.1 times. The positive balance is $6 billion in Azerbaijan, and the negative balance in Armenia is $2.6 billion. Investment, $13.5 billion, was invested in Azerbaijan last year, $900 million in Armenia. The difference is 15 times. The president did not allow Azerbaijan to increase its foreign debt so as not to become a threat to economic independence. Foreign public debt. Azerbaijan's foreign public debt is $7.9 billion. Armenia's is $6 billion. Foreign public debt in Azerbaijan is 17% of GDP. In Armenia, it's more than 40%. Foreign exchange reserves in Azerbaijan are 6.4 times more than foreign debt. And Armenia's foreign debt is 2.3 times more than the foreign exchange reserves. The foreign debt per capita is $799 in Azerbaijan and $1,900 in Armenia. In this way, the Supreme Commander-in-Chief announced the consequences for the other side in the event of a war, and this statistic was soon confirmed on the battlefield. Everyone says that the victory was won in 44 days, but I'm talking about the beginning of this war 15 years ago. Back in December of 2005, when he established the Ministry of Defense industry, Ilham Aliyev knew very well what an incomparable role this body would play for the last war.
What did it mean to create an independent defense industry? This meant that one day, at the most crucial moment of the battle, the warrior would not be left helpless. The name of our sniper weapon is the Istiglal, freedom. It was not by chance. The victory in the Patriotic War was not short-lived and was not only a matter of 44 days. Every day, the Supreme Commander-in-Chief was making a step toward the greatest and most important victory, which would be written in his biography, destiny, and most importantly, the history of Azerbaijan. In today's world, the factor of power comes to the fore. Look, international law is being grossly violated in various parts of the world. If in the past they wanted to hide it in some way, today they do not need it at all. Today, the principle of might makes right prevails in the world. This is the new reality. We must be ready for this reality. The world is changing, and we must be ready for this change. Fortunately, we have been increasing our economic and military power for many years. We were preparing for today's situation, and today we are ready. Therefore, the power factor has always been and always will be on the agenda. We see this not only in our conflict, but also in many other conflicts. Therefore, we will use various opportunities and the restoration of the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan is our main task. Azerbaijani citizens should know that this is the main duty of every citizen, the main duty of the state. The Supreme Commander-in-Chief also won because the great people and the great leader ideally supported each other. Aliyev gave a completely new content to the traditional managerial format of the official by making the official serve the citizen. Talks with the people affected by the earthquake like their children, fathers and grandchildren provided a national blessing for Ilham Aliyev. The famous Sarai grandmother was not only a 90-year-old grandmother, but also a picture, an image, a symbol of the homeland. Grandmother Sarai's words were a real blessing for the homeland. She sent Ilham Aliyev and Meriban Aliyev a decisive case on September 27th as a model of the state and homeland. Thank you very much. May God bless you with health. May God bless you and protect you. I wish you long life and have grandchildren and great-grandchildren like me. Thank God I have them. Thank for your coming. I'm blissfully happy. May God protect you, oh my zealous son. Letters, petitions, requests, and wishes of ordinary citizens, usually when they became upset, brought the system of presidential people's relationships to a decisive phase of trust. Before the victory over Armenian fascism, the Supreme Commander-in-Chief declared war on corruption and bribery, and he won. We allocate these funds so that today a person who cannot find a job should receive at least a minimum wage and have some bread. They also want to seize this money. That is, they are not satisfied. It's like a disease. And treatment for this disease has already begun. I have warned several times that if you act illegally, it will end badly. And you will be punished. However, some people thought it was not their fault. Some thought they were above the law, or they thought that someone would help them, their patrons, high-ranking people who had supported them for years. I said, it will not happen. Aliyev's path to victory went through this. The leader of Azerbaijan also walked to the summit of Shusha, eliminating such obstacles. The war declared by the president inspired the people. Now it would be possible to sing a song together. My country, my land, you are my homeland. My Azerbaijan, my mother, you are my native country, my Azerbaijan. Exactly one year later, when we saw Supreme Commander-in-Chief walking proudly under the sounds of the song, O Motherland, 
We were convinced once again that the president loved Azerbaijan with all his heart. Everyone is talking about the victory in 44 days, but it took years for Ilham Aliyev to win. Each of the nearly 3,000 martyrs who sacrificed their lives had lived the life of a hero. True, it is God that gives life, but for the sake of the homeland, land, national pride, people's honor, Ilham Aliyev brought them up as brave and zealous people at that time. A new man, a new citizen, an army of benefactors was formed during Aliyev's rule. I have repeatedly said that the Azerbaijani people will never accept this situation. Purposeful policy was pursued in the political, economic, military, moral spheres in the direction of educating the young generation. And such a young generation who sacrificed their lives for the homeland grew up. A young generation who liberated our land from the enemy at the cost of their lives grew up. Representatives of all generations took part in the war and showed heroism. But everyone should know that the main mission was fulfilled by young people who grew up during my presidency, those who were still children in 2003. The Supreme Commander-in-Chief won because he respected national traditions and based his policy on them. He explained to the younger generation the value of independence and respect for national traditions. In this victory, Mughan details and carpet patterns were felt, which were restored under the care of the First Lady Meriban Alieva. The struggle for victory was the way of life for the Alieyevs. It was the character of the family. That is why the tears came into the First Lady's eyes, like all the mothers of the martyrs, all the mothers of the veterans. On the way to the last victory, there was a campaign, Justice for Khojalu, which the president's daughter, Leila Aliyeva, has been leading for years. Ilham Aliyev began to instill the basic habits of victory in the society suffering from defeat syndrome. He accustomed the young man of the future to sports. He started the Olympic movement. Even when Azerbaijan was a record holder for a number of Olympic medals. They were on the way to victory in Karabakh as well as the victory in the Eurovision Song Contest despite the meaningless remarks by the slow-witted ones. They must be thrilled for their mom right now. Even when Azerbaijan left behind almost all the European countries. This will be a proud moment for him. Giving a gold medal. To a fellow Azeri. When the new speed standards offered to the world in Formula One races, Ilham Aliyev led Azerbaijan to the great victory. Ilham Aliyev was preparing for battle of this historic destiny at all times and periods. Today, everyone is talking about the 44-day war. But I am well aware that this war has a long history. First, an organized nation was formed for the war. Then these people gave their support with the most serious discipline, maintaining internal stability. Such an ideal situation has never been experienced in the system of state civil relations of Azerbaijan. When someone's house was on fire, it was as if the smoke would make the state's eyes water. It is officially the order of Mr. President the damaged caused to each of you will be compensated by the state.
These applauses were addressed to the leader of the state, who proved that he was with the citizens regardless of anything. He was also the leader who helped large problem loans of the citizens. However, the state has no obligation to unconditionally close a citizen's loan. Moreover, there was a possible war on the agenda. However, before the territorial integrity of the war, the unity of the population was necessary. Good day. The program has been placed on air. Three of the President of the Republic of Azerbaijan on additional measures to resolve problem loans of individuals in the Republic of Azerbaijan. Recently, ensuring macroeconomic stability in the country, restoring and increasing the pace of economic development and expanding financial opportunities, as well as other areas, have created conditions for stable support to sort of pay people's overdue loans in foreign currency. With each such step, the president took us to the heights of Susha. The people loved their homeland and their state more. The most important qualities of state's model of victory were determination, professionalism, strong will, and purposefulness. For the decisive moment, these were Aliyev's qualities. Do you know why Aliyev won? Do you remember? The defeat in the 1990s began with the civilian population. No matter how selfless the fighters were, the uncertain psychological state of the rear, their inability to trust the leadership of that time and the army, and their subconscious preparations as refugees spoke for themselves. Those who fled from the enemy could not be called treacherous. The title, Slow Running is Coward, is appropriate for those who are unable to protect them, forcing these poor people to flee from the enemy. Do you know where we are? Do you know this area very well? You probably did not forget the residents of Kalbajar who boarded helicopters here. They boarded the helicopters. They left Kalbajar immediately. In the face of fear that the Armenians will enter here at any time. For me, this place is both the highest and, in some cases, the lowest. The highest, of course, means the height of the flag today. After the operations carried out under the leadership of the Supreme Commander-in-Chief of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, and the lowest one because of the events of April 1993. It is the atmosphere and mood of that time. It is the place where, as a result of the incompetent management of the PFP Musavat duo, the people who were expelled from their homeland were not actually flying, but rolling down. In the war called the 44-day war, the Supreme Commander-in-Chief showed the world another nation determined, uncompromising, persistent. It was already his people, Ilham Aliyev's people. No one here was thinking of retreating. I witnessed in those days what it means to protect the homeland like the apple of an eye. This lady loved her homeland more than her eyes. She sacrificed both eyes. She sacrificed the pupils of her eyes. Do you know that we liberated Fazuli from occupation today? Really, I'm very happy. You can think that your revenge has been taken. Yes, you are right. It was the people of Azerbaijan who did not even blink their eyes. There were young Javad Hans who were ready to lose their wealth and look straight into the eyes of death with a smile because the Supreme Commander-in-Chief was Ilham Aliyev. The invincible army was felt in the voice of this woman from Genja who is crying. The Supreme Commander-in-Chief was ahead. That our president struggle with them as needed. We believe in the strength of the people. We must not stop. We must fight to the end. He expels the Armenian villains from our lands. That's enough for us. The secret of Ilham Aliyev's victory was that the whole nation took part in the struggle. All this, a multinational people, everyone here was Azerbaijani. Everyone was talking about the 44-day war. 
In fact, it had been 27 years since a new mobilization was being prepared and Gadabakh would be liberated by the fighters trained by Ilham Aliyev. Aliyev's war was based on faith and belief. The unity of faith and belief did not come into being in a day, in a month, in what everyone now calls it, the 44 days. It was the result of the intercivilizational forums organized at the initiative of the president, the messages of the Baku projects to Europe and the world. In this war, multicultural thinking and multinationalism made them stand against mononationalism of Armenia. When Ilham Aliyev and the First Lady prayed in the Kaaba, they also prayed for the peaceful presence of all religions. After the Christian citizens cleansed the Church of Nazi Armenians, such a confession was also a must pray. Today, we can feel proud that we could liberate this Church from Nazi Armenians. We are proud that we could fulfill our duty in front of our homeland. The Supreme Commander-in-Chief ensured the victory of Azerbaijani morality over Armenian morality. Hojali executioners like Kocherian, Sarkisian, Ohanyan intruded into Garabakh during the war. They were there. But when they saw that the victorious Azerbaijani army was historically liberating their lands, they fled and hid. We need to ask them why they left. They all were in Khanken. Why did you flee? Why did you hide? I have said repeatedly to take off those iron things, throw them into the rubbish bin. You are fugitives. You are cowards. We have ruined you. The most successful leader is able to turn the problems he encounters into a formula of success for the state he governs. When COVID-19 broke out and the planet is a disaster, Eliyev first of all turned the fight against the pandemic into a system of discipline and obedience of the people. The citizens began to get used to the new conditions and terms with the discipline of a soldier. Billions of manat were allocated to meet the difficulties in the economic and social needs of low-income families in particular and prepared the state for the eve of the most serious military and political events. We didn't experience the humiliation of the back front, like the stories of Stalingrad, Kursk and Brest. No cats and dogs were left in our streets, no rats in the basements or from our movies dedicated to war because of the famine of the Second World War. My card. <laughs> I've lost my card. Hurry up, kid. We haven't seen these days. Do you know why? It is due to the fact that on the eve of the military campaign, the Supreme Commander-in-Chief laid a solid foundation for a sustainable economic and social future and did his best not to make the citizen feel the impact of war. This was one of the main reasons for the victory of the Supreme Commander-in-Chief. Everyone is talking about the 44-day war. This was only the shock of the war, the moment that lasted 44 days. The Supreme Commander-in-Chief who offered water to the father of the martyred on the way to victory and the First Lady who almost knelt before an elderly mother showed the society an example of a higher state, a higher family culture. The Supreme Commander-in-Chief coordinated the Army's high combat readiness with attention to the military special respect for the martyrs and care for the veterans. These shots, which almost everyone has seen, take us before the 44-day war. Brothers, this was how the First Lady of the country addressed the veterans of the war. This model of treatment of honorable people was a spiritual contribution of the First Family in the Great Victory Day. It was a proof that the veterans were considered the most honorable members of society. I'm proud that there are such Azerbaijani sons and I have such brothers. There is a spiritual connection between this meeting and the meeting with the first wounded in the September 27th war. Where were you wounded? In Murov. You? In Teter. We saw tears in the First Lady's eyes when she met the mothers of the April Martyrs. It was four years before what is called the 44-day war by everyone. 
Dear mothers, I bow in front of you as a mother. We have brought up such children that today all the people are proud of them. This was before the last attack of the war. I'm talking about Aliyev's path to Gadabakh and freedom. I also say that victory is a command. Its author is the first warrior, supreme commander-in-chief. Azerbaijan was defeated in the 1990s because the republic's supreme commander-in-chiefs were either ousted or abducted. Both the soldiers and the officers were the same soldiers and officers at that time because of their perseverance and love for their homeland. They went to war with all their hearts. They also chose the way to martyrdom with dignity. But they were put in such a situation by incompetent and so-called commanders. <laughs> Ilham Aliyev healed and rehabilitated Azerbaijani soldiers. He pulled them up out of troubles. Before the last battle, September 27th counterattack, the army went through the battles of April 2016 and 2018. He helped the soldiers to rise to their feet. It was as if we were approaching the height of the flag. Ilham Eliyev prepared the skies for battle before the drones. That level was too high for his opponents to reach, as high as our artificial satellites. When the enemy became stronger on the Talish Plateau, the president of Azerbaijan seized the cosmic heights. The countdown had begun. It was almost time. When Armenia was looking for supporters in Moscow and Paris, Azerbaijan was involved in building a model of the planetary future at the foothills of the Alps. Aliyev was preparing Azerbaijan for a great victory in Davos. There was a fantastic difference between the thinking of the Fourth Industrial Revolution and the spontaneous rebellion of the Armenians, which, like the street oppositionists of Azerbaijan in the 1990s, it is no coincidence that Azerbaijan's military operations are like the textbook of the future. Aliyev became the author and winner of the modern war, the war of the 21st century. The role of the digital world, artificial intelligence and renewable energy for the future of the world was announced by the Supreme Commander-in-Chief in Garabagh. Everyone is talking about the victory in 44 days. However, it took years for Aliyev to convince the non-aligned movement of the Azerbaijan's rights. The leader of Azerbaijan turned this organization into the second UN to liberate our lands from occupation. Documents proving Azerbaijan's right were obtained in all international organizations. In fact, these processes did not go very normally. Every step of Azerbaijan was accompanied by the most serious resistance and skillfully organized provocations. Ilham Aliyev's victory was also due to the choice of an honest ally. Welcome. Welcome to your homeland. Welcome to Shusha. The unity of brotherhood between Turkey and Azerbaijan are forever.
Our power is Azerbaijan's power. And Azerbaijan's power is ours as well. With these thoughts, I personally thank President Aliyev for the hospitality shown to me and my staff. I hope that the decisions we made at our meeting will be a blessing. I greet you all with love and respect. Azerbaijan, which launched the war with the moral and political support of Turkey and Pakistan, achieved useful loyalty to Georgia and Russia, and tried not to harm the Islamic Republic of Iran, also won in diplomacy. Another important condition of the victory of the leader of Azerbaijan was unconditional victory in the information war. In this war, Aliyev was simply unique. Why actually is Karabakh so important for Azerbaijan? I mean, is there some kind of resource or is it just symbolic? Alsace and Larin, is it important for you? Bavaria, is it important for you? Or Ryan Westphalia, is our land, it's our territory, internationally recognized. It's not a matter of resources. We have many resources here in Baku. It's a matter of justice, it's a matter of national pride, and it's a matter of international law. International law and the whole international community recognize Nagorno-Karabakh as an integral part of Azerbaijan. And we are restoring justice, and we are implementing the UN Security Council resolutions, which were on paper for 27 years. You say Karabakh is Azerbaijan. What can you say about the fear of ethnic Armenians? First of all, hold on, sir, that they might be ethnically cleansed if, if the government of Azerbaijan retakes the territory. I understand today in Azerbaijan, thousands of Armenians live in different cities of our country, primarily in the capital city of Baku. One of the Armenian long-range destructive missiles, Smirch, which they used to attack our second largest city of Ganja, hit the house of a native Armenian woman. So today in Azerbaijan, there are thousands of Armenians who live in peace and dignity. But in Armenia, all Azerbaijanis have been expelled. Armenian's population is 99% Armenians. They committed ethnic cleansing against us. What the Armenian president said, he's lying again. Azerbaijan, which has been ignored for many years, did not only beat Armenia by conveying its rights and justice to the world. For many years, the leading Western media, which has been pressing Azerbaijan, was also neutralized. Along with the prominent representatives of mass media, which were defeated one after another, the anti-Azerbaijani platforms were also destroyed. Just as the enemy was once convinced that the weak point of the Azerbaijanis was to keep the settlements inhabited by civilians in fear and fire. It seemed to him that the same tactic would work in Tater, Barda and Genja. The world's leading media were mistaken. They also thought that Azerbaijan would lose the information war. They were wrong. Ilham Aliyev waged and won in an information war in four languages around the world. Mr. President, thank you so much for inviting us and talking to us. I think that we have already broken a record. I have been working as a journalist for 25 years, but I've never witnessed any president holding a press conference in four languages. One of the reasons for Ilham Aliyev's victory was that he always told the truth, but the other was that the other side usually lied. We have repeatedly appealed to UNESCO for 30 years. We repeatedly informed them that our mosques were destroyed, our historical monuments were destroyed. Armenians made our historical monuments their own. Have they sent at least one mission? 
Have they at least replied to our appeal? As soon as the war ended, they began to speak about preserving the Armenian monuments. We preserve all the monuments. We preserve the monuments of all the nations. The world is aware of it. Look here, it used to be a mosque. I request UNESCO to visit this place. Come and look at it. I appeal to the European Council not to be silent and visit this place. All the mosques have been destroyed. How can they destroy mosques? The task of returning Karabakh and expelling the enemy from the occupied territories was assigned to the Security Council by special resolutions of the United Nations. The UN Security Council did not have the power to do so. Azerbaijan itself resolved the conflict. Azerbaijan has implemented the resolutions adopted by the UN Security Council in 1993, which demanded the immediate, complete, and unconditional withdrawal of the Armenian Armed Forces from the occupied territories of Azerbaijan. Unfortunately, these resolutions remained on paper for 27 years. And if Azerbaijan, using Article 51 of the UN Charter, which includes the right to self-defense, had not restored its territorial integrity, these resolutions would remain on paper for the next 27 years. By ensuring the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan alone, Ilham Aliyev proved that the rights and will of the Azerbaijani people are stronger than those of the UN Security Council. Everybody is talking about the 44-day war. I spoke about the 17-year war and the victory cord that lasted 44 days. I spoke of victory, and the name of this victory is just Ilham Aliyev, only he. We showed the world who we are. We showed the world that we are a great nation. We showed the greatness of our people during the war and in the years after the war. The Armenians who destroyed all of our cities When ambassadors came to these places, foreigners, when they went, they are horrified. How can there be so much vandalism? How can there be so much hatred? Can there be so much barbarism? This was done by Armenians during the occupation. They committed this atrocity by demolishing all the buildings, looting, and even taking the tombstones to Armenia. We obeyed the laws of war during the war. We did not violate the laws of war. We behaved with dignity in war, as we did in life and politics. Victory Day is our holiday. This is a holiday of victory. This is a holiday of courage. This is a holiday of justice. This is a holiday of national pride, national dignity. After that, like a victorious nation in Garabakh and Zengizur, we will live forever. If any force in Armenia despises us, if they look at us wrong, if it takes any revenge positions, it will see our fist, and our fist is red. The president personally hoisted the flag of each settlement he liberated from occupation. The flagpoles of these flags look like exclamation marks. It's as if the Supreme Commander-in-Chief draws a picture of his statement on the map. Garabakh is Azerbaijan! Exclamation mark. <laughs> <laughs>